So, I guess first of all, uh, to get a feel for why everybody's here, uh, I guess ra raise your hand if you are actually looking to use Linux as your primary. Uh, okay. And then how many of you are just need to kind of develop for Linux or use it for work or something like that? About 50, 50. Okay. Cool. All right. So the first kind of one of the most important things is where to get help because you're going to run into all sorts of problems. Um, if you're using Ubuntu, um, I think it's Ubuntu forums. Org. It's a great place to get help. You probably get some nasty answers with people who are just telling you you're stupid, but it's okay. Ask anyway. Um, Google's great. You often get links to Stack Overflow, which will have kind of quick answers to quick questions like what, how do I do such and such with whatever command. Um, the other real important place to be able to get help with a specific command, for example, um, you know, cat is a command that will let you uh, print out a file to the screen. Uh, it's called man, the man pages. Most commands have a man page, um, and they're going to have very technical and comprehensive information about what the command can do, what the options are, um, and how, you know, kind of the behavior of it. So if you're trying to use a command that you saw online, but it's not quite working right, you want to try to look for the man page. Um, usually commands have their built-in help output, so it'll be dash h usually, or dash dash help. Um, this is, you know, the man page is really, if there is one available, that's where you want to go. Um, some programs have a thing called info, um, cat might. Info is really horrible and it's unfortunate if you have to go here to get help, but if there is no man page, you might wind up looking through the info pages. Um, the man pages are basically, it's one text file basically that explains everything with the command. The info pages are these browsable monstrosities where you can kind of click on different sections and they'll take you to different places. Um, I hope you don't have to go to the info pages. You'll be better off with Google. Um, and also, good places to get help. It, um, IRC, if you guys know IRC, most projects and programs usually have their own IRC channels. So it's just like a, their chat rooms. Uh, you know, there's going to be a bunch of room for Ubuntu in all different languages um, or kind of Ubuntu specific ones like installing help or you know, running a VM help. Um, those are good places if you want kind of quick feedback and you're really having trouble, usually someone will help you out there. And then also mailing lists. Um, you can subscribe to a mailing list for Ubuntu and get help there. Or if you're using something like Octave, which is a math software, and you're writing very intense code and you need information about changes to new versions, mailing lists are usually good as a way to subscribe to information about the program. Um, okay, so. Um, we covered the history of Linux, but just want to make it clear what Linux really is. Um, it is just the operating system. It basically, Linux's job is to coordinate different processes and uh, talk to the hardware. So, um, if you look at a list of the program, if you look at a list of the programs running on your computer, Linux is just one. It's this K-thread program. It's one big monstrous program, and it doesn't do much. Uh, you can't just log into a computer that's only running Linux. Um, on top of Linux, you have all the user space programs, which are things like Firefox and uh, the program that's drawing the screen right now. Those are all programs that run on top of Linux. So you really can't have anything without a whole bunch of other stuff. So um, this brings us to what a distribution is. Um, Ubuntu, most of you have probably heard of at this point, is one, and he listed a whole bunch of them. Distributions are like composers of an orchestra. Uh, you have all these different packages, 
and they don't necessarily work well together from the start. Um, and so distributions say we're going to take Firefox version 10, 10 and uh, this you know image rendering library version one, and we're going to package them almost all up, and they should work together, and um, uh, kind of helps set, you know get people going on Linux. You're not just going to there, there is a distribution called Linux from scratch where you start, you compile the kernel, and you have to compile every single program and make sure they work together. Um, so you're basically going to use something like Ubuntu or Red Hat. Um, there's some different types of distributions. Ubuntu is a regular release distribution. And so every six months, uh, April and October, they're going to come out with a release. And basically what that means is they're going to checkpoint a whole bunch of versions of different software, package them up, and they're going to work together. And if um, there's like a new version of Firefox that comes out after they release it, you're going to have to wait six months. By default, you're going to have to wait six months to get that version of the software. Uh, Ubuntu has these, what does PPA stand for? Um, personal package. They have these kind of uh, repositories where you can get updated software specific to different programs. Like most people want the latest version of Firefox. They don't want to wait six months. So you can kind of supersede your distribution's role a little bit. But um, most distributions are like every six months or once a year or whenever their next plan is ready. Um, and then there's also a rolling release distribution. Um, that's what I am running here, uh, Arch Linux. And basically, new stuff comes as it's available. Um, some lag time sometimes, but it's it's kind of like a yeah, it's just it's rolling. There there, there are no checkpoints. Um, and so, the reason why it's so difficult to um, orchestrate all these packages is because uh, a lot of packages depend on other packages. For example, you have lib PNG, which is responsible for drawing PNG images, and there's a JPEG one too. And uh, if you compile Firefox against that library, and the library changes, Firefox won't work anymore. So now you have to recompile it. So the distribution, they, you know, they take all the software, make sure they work together. And, and that. Um, so you know, you're probably going to wind up with Ubuntu if you're new to this, because it's kind of the most hand-holding distribution out there. But if you're interested in kind of getting up-to-date software, you're going to want a rolling release where you're going to have to get your hands a little more dirty. Um, but no matter what, um, if you're looking to switch to Linux or just use it a lot um, and think that you're not going to use the command line that much, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because uh, people like uh, Canonical, which make Ubuntu, they make a lot of GUIs to configure different settings on your computer, but it's not comprehensive, and when you run into a problem that the GUI didn't account for, you're going to look for help, and the help is going to tell you to run some command, and you're going to have to know the command line. Um, so I think just Andy's going to go over the command line a little more, but one important point about getting help is um, you see the... Uh, Can you make your text a little bigger? Yeah. I just wanted to show what the process is. So, how did you do that? How do you do that? Okay, uh, <laughs> it's uh, Control plus, so actually Control Shift plus. You can to make also it bigger. Yeah, if you go to the View menu, you can do it too. Move okay. your mouse up to the top of the screen. There's a View. There's a yeah. Zoom button. Zoom option. And then Control minus to make it smaller, and then zero to level it out. I think it's the same as Firefox for changing the uh, the size of the page. Um, okay, so if you're getting help and someone tells you to run a command, first of all, be, be careful about what the command is. Second of all, if it's a dollar sign, that usually means you run it as yourself, as, you know, I mean you just run the command. If it's a hash sign, um, it means run it as root. So that's just kind of the, the standard. Dollar sign means normal, unprivileged user, hash sign means root. So if they tell you to install something, uh, it's probably going to be a hash sign. So what's root? What? What's root? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so 
On Windows, you basically log in as yourself and you are the administrator. On uh, Linux and all Unices, um, there's one special user with an ID of one, and that's the root user, and the root user can do anything. Um, there's really no limits to what root can do on the system. Um, and so a lot of like, you know, installing packages, removing packages, you need to have root access. It's just like, uh, I guess on Windows now, it pops up a thing that says, you know, do you authorize this? Yeah. Uh, that would be like what root, it'd be like switching to root to, to do that. And yeah. How did you switch to root again? Um, so it's, a, pro, it's a, a command called sudo, which Andy will cover a little bit more, but it's basically, you know, sudo and then whatever you want is like switching to root real quick and switching back to do whatever you want. Okay. Um, 